Today we're going to be matching footage from three different cameras and I'll show you how you can do it very easily in DaVinci Resolve. So I work with Sony footage, Canon footage and also Apple Log footage and this is the example that I'll be showing you with footage from all of those three different cameras. And if you are a Premiere Pro user, do not worry, I'll be going through this tutorial very simply so that you can also follow along. And by the way, if you don't have Resolve, you can just download it for free. If you get the non-studio version, the tutorial that I'll be showing you is on Resolve, the non-studio version. So let's jump into this tutorial. I have this first clip, which is my Sony clip shot in Sony S Log 3. I have this Canon Log 3 clip and also this Apple Log clip. So if you're completely new to Resolve and you're coming from Premiere Pro, once you have DaVinci Resolve downloaded, all you need to do is you can just disregard all of these tabs at the bottom for now. Just go to the edit tab and you can just drag and drop your footage into the media pool right here. Or you can just import bin or import media in here. Once that's done, you will drag your clips into your timeline. And I'm doing this in DaVinci Resolve because Premiere Pro as everybody knows is not that great at color correction and color grading. There have been some strides in the color space management side of things, but they're still years, years behind DaVinci Resolve. I am still a very avid user of Premiere Pro and I am very quick at editing in Premiere Pro. So most of my projects are in Premiere Pro, but when I need more intuitive color correction or color matching between cameras, I jump into Resolve. So once we have that, we'll go into the color tab. And this is what you'll see. Your timeline is right here with the three clips here. This is also a reflection of what your timeline looks like. So that is how you navigate this page. Click on the first one. This is the Sony clip. So we'll add a node right here. And right now this is, there's no lines here. So if that happens, just drag a line and create it. So it goes from the clip to the node and then one for your final delivery. So just make sure that you have something like this. And once that's done, I'm going to be adding two nodes. And if you not, are not familiar about nodes, that's a complete different topic and it's outside of the scope of this video. But you can just quickly follow along and then just do exactly what I'm doing if you are completely new to DaVinci Resolve. Hold Option or Alt and press S on your keyboard and you'll create another node here. And we'll do that one more time and they'll create another node. So before we continue, I'm just going to name this node. So CST. I'll tell you what that means in a second. This second note will name correction. The third one over here will be to rec 709. So on the first node, we'll go into our effects and I will search for color space transform. And this is where the magic happens. And that's why this is named CST for color space transform. So once we're here, all we need to do is find the input color space for this camera, it was Sony. So it was Sony S Gamma 3 dot Cine. The input gamma was Sony S Log 3. So we can select that and right away, I kind of transformed that flat footage into this, but we're not fully done yet. So output color space, this is what will allow us to do that color matching between different cameras. So we'll go and select DaVinci wide gamut and under output gamma, DaVinci, DaVinci intermediate. So you notice that this went back into a lock looking image. Don't worry about that, we'll fix that later on. Before we continue, let's turn off this correction node. We don't need it right now. And on the Rec 709 node, we're going to add this color space transform effect again. Input color space will be what was in the output of this first node, so the Vinci Y gamut. And the gamma was the Vinci wide. Uh, sorry, the Vinci Intermediate. And I'll put color space, that will be our Rec 709. And our Gamma, will select Gamma 2.4. This is it. So just by adding two nodes, you're able to just quickly go from your log footage to the Vinci Intermediate and now into Rec 709. So what we'll do now is apply this to our other two clips from different cameras. So from here, you can hover over the image, right click, grab it still, and now in the gallery, you have that still right here. And let's go on to the Canon clip right here. What we'll do is now that we have that still, we can just hover over it and that exact grade will be applied or you can preview it. But what we'll do is click and drag it onto the Canon clip. Oops, that zoomed in a little bit. And this exact node 
configuration has been added to the Canon clip. Super easy, super simple. This is one of the things I love about the Venture Resolve. But we're not done yet. This was for Sony cameras, so now we're gonna switch this to Canon. Canon Cinema Gamut, Impid Gamma, that was Canon C Lock 3. Canon Lock 3, and that is it. We're pretty much done. As you can see, it's actually pretty, pretty good already. Both clips are matching quite well. There are still some things that we can do to match them even better. And that's why I have this correction note added here. But if you're still watching and if this is helping you right now, it would be greatly appreciated if you hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Your support is always greatly appreciated. Before we go and correct this, what we'll do is go into now the Apple log footage. So we'll drag this onto here. Here we will select Rec 2020. That's for Apple log footage and input gamma will select Apple log. And that is done. And let's go over all the clips. It's harder to match the iPhone footage because you know, it's a phone, but it's actually very close enough. So now we'll try to match the Sony and the Canon a little bit more. So we'll, I think we'll work on the Canon one. So we can have this one selected and then in your window, you can hover and click on this button and now you can view both clips and have them side by side. And let's go on to this node, the correction node, and we can turn it back on. So I'll just do very, very basic correction, drag that offset a little bit, that gain just a tiny bit as well. I'll add just a little bit of saturation to the entire thing. And just very minor tweaks, you can see that it's actually very, very close. I'll be also creating a tutorial on how you can match cameras in Premiere Pro. I'll be going over that tutorial soon, so make sure you stay subscribed so you can watch that next. But before you leave, here's how you can also add a color grade to this footage. So this will be for another tutorial as well, just to how to match cameras and also add a grade to have all of those cameras look consistent. So what I've done here is I added a few extra nodes so I had it, I have a color space transform effect, and then I also have a film, filmic log node, and this transforms the term DaVinci intermediate output gamma here to a Cineon film log, and this is what allows me to apply a LUT to the clip. So pretty much this is what's matching the cameras, this first node. This is what's converting them into a similar log sort of profile or color space. So when that you apply that LUT, onto that log, it's very similar across the board for all the three different cameras. This is my correction, my correction node, and this is my LUT node. Um, as you can see, this is my Sony clip, this is my Canon clip, and this is the iPhone clip. So if you go through all of these, you can see that the look is very, very consistent. For someone who is not trained to look at this stuff or to check out for different cameras, they might not even know that all of these clips were shot on the three different cameras. Maybe they might notice the Apple clip, but overall, I think it's really, really close. So anyways, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope that this was useful to you. Have a blessed day. And here are a couple more videos you could watch next, and I'll see you next time.